What's up, guys? I'm the world's best Spanish coach. I put lessons exclusively on Medify. So, if you want a galaxy brain like me, click the link in the description and sign up to learn from a god dang Chad. I want to talk about something that I think has been of a more common topic. It's not like a big topic again in Smash, but I think it's going to get to that point, especially uh, in December. And that is too many tournaments, right? I've been hearing this take a lot. I think it's interesting. Let's talk about the good thing is about first. Let me tell you, I play a lot of fighting games casually. You know, I've played things like Guilty Gear. I've even tried Street Fighter. Things like Injustice, Mortal Kombat. I love dabbling in a lot of fighting games. I pay attention to a lot of different esports. And the thing about Smash that's nice is we have so many events period you compare it to like pretty much every other fighting game we just have more majors constantly things like guilty gear get like probably like you know four big like i mean big events a year as far as i'm aware right so i could be wrong on that one but like they don't get as many big events as smash no one does and it's very nice because pretty much anywhere you live with a smash scene there's at least one big event a year in your area right whether you're in somewhere like washington socal texas Florida, New York, Ohio, you, you name it. And there's pretty much always a chance to meet some top players and just go to a national, a major. That's really awesome. Every other fighting game scene would be completely jealous of Smash in that regard. That also means a lot of times these local scenes are doing all right. You can't have a major without really a local scene generally, like you can. But I think it's a lot harder if you're not like some massive established thing, like, you know, VG Bootcamp just decides to run an event wherever. Even then they're picking places where there's a scene. So game is doing healthy. Players ever engaged have chances to attend stuff, don't have to travel far as well, which is a big deal. It also means if you're more of a viewer for Smash, you don't really go to these events, there's pretty much something every single weekend to put on. On. Heck, you look at my YouTube, right? Pretty much every week I have one or two videos talking about one or maybe multiple different events that happened that week, which is awesome. A lot of times some upset happening, some crazy run happening. Maybe it's not like some new player is winning an event, but suddenly you have DK beating like the best players in Europe. There's no dead time for Smash. Hasn't been for a long time. The point is, there's a lot of good things having this many events. Like this isn't a problem for the most part. Like this is one of the benefits of being a big grassroots scene. Now, what were the bad parts? The big elephant in the room, right? The one everyone talks about player burnout. I mean, I've experienced it. This last three months since Smash kind of going on the two events, Summit and Ludwig's event. And even then, I kind of feel like going to either of them just because I've been very burnt out on the game. Even before Smash kind of was going to a few events. And basically, I, I, I went to a lot of events because there's always events to go to. And I'm one of those people that's like, if there is an event, I'm taking this opportunity and going until it got to the point where I was like, I can't do it. And a lot of top players, I think are like that, right? To different levels, of course, chance to, you know, expand branding, money, just whatever it is, whatever motivates us, we go to them. But now what's happening is I think a lot of us first of all burnt out like i'm just starting to get back into more events i'm gonna be going to for the rest of the year probably just apex smash World tour and end event and that's probably all i'm going to i want to go to some locals again i stopped doing that but i think i'm gonna try and mix those in more to my like schedule and i'm really trying to make sure next year i don't do more than two events a month period and i'm trying to also never do two events back to back unless i have to hell the fact i'm skipping main stage is big because main stage you know, gets you in the summit if you do well but even despite that i can't get the motivation to do three events back to back in December of all times. That stinks. It's not like, oh my God, these top players are more important than everyone. We should focus on them. But from a tournament organizer perspective, the way to get more views is getting good players. There's a reason why TO is like, hey, I have these invitations of top players. Hey, let's fly up this person. Hey, maybe we can get this person to pre-reg and advertise them. Because people are like, oh my God, the buzz. I want you to sign something for me and take a dumb picture where you do a stupid thumbs up pose and duck lips face. And it's like... Right, people want to meet us, whoever your favorite top players. And also gets the viewership on Twitch. No one's going to really watch an event if it's like, you know, 400 people, but there's not like any PGR players. Where if you have an event with like 30 people, but they're all PGR, that event, people are going to watch it generally. This is the other bad thing, right? Is with all these events, we become a lot pickier as to what we're going to. Like, you're never going to see me at a one day regional, pretty much ever, unless it's within my own region. I'm not flying out to something that's one day. There's just no reason for me to do it. Even smaller events, if it's two day, I'm probably not going to do it. There's just no reason. It makes it if you're a smaller event. It's hard to get the really good players to come out, especially a good amount of them, which makes it harder to get, you know, your local scene to come out and, uh, potentially which makes it harder to get viewership as well on Twitch. So it makes it harder to grow your tournament series as a whole, or even just make it sustainable in the first place if you can't get all these players out. When we're all being picky for whatever reason, because there's so many different options to go to and different levels and priorities of events. And this is a different than Smash 4 Days. Smash 4 Days, there was big events, but you know, there's like a monthly 2 to G sagas, there's quite a few nationals, but I went to a lot of regionals that were one day regionals because there wasn't always something on the horizon coming up that was massive. I think that hurts a lot. 
It also means you don't see a lot of players in fighting each other. I think this season alone, like, there's so many PGR players that have not fought each other all this season. I mean, I haven't fought a lot of PGR. Granted, kind of taking a break because burnout, whatever. But it makes kind of like having an understanding of who's better than who harder, I'd say, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing, but it is worth mentioning where it's like, it's rare to compare when, oh, this person won this event with these players, but then this person won this event with a completely different set of around equally good players. Like, how do you compare their runs? How do you compare two people that close to each other but have never fought or really had the same opponents so that stinks another negative of all these events is a lot of times you have weekends with multiple events at the same time it's not the worst thing i don't think viewership really gets hurt that much by events sharing weekends with each other but i think it does hurt a little bit granted a lot of times it's like international event as the same weekend as like u.s event so once again i think that's why the viewership doesn't really hurt each other that much but also means that these events sometimes are fighting for players it goes back to the idea of like you know which event am i going to pick am i even going to go to one of the events if both the events are splitting up the player base and i have to pick one it's hard to build storylines rankings all that stuff so while you have more data to work with it's not as quality but overall i feel like i listed more negatives than positives all these events it's so much easier to hyper focus on the negatives right like oh my god something bad let's just talk about forever because human nature ugh. but really i don't think it's a problem i think the only problem that really arises from this is when you have very important events like i mentioned december first of all holiday month christmas and all that stuff i just want to chill at the end of the year and then main stage smash will tour and Panda Cup all back to back. I know January is also a busy month, but there, there's no break. That's an issue with scheduling. Let me know if there's anything I didn't talk about that you guys want to mention as your thoughts into this, because I'm sure I missed some stuff. I've been just kind of talking off the top of my head. This video as I'm recording, it's like 10 minutes long, but I'm sure my editor is going to make this like five minutes because he's freaking amazing at getting to a main point because I love rambling. Peace out.